Now in the first video in this series, we saw that the classical logic which we're studying requires that names or constants pick out actually existing objects in the domain. But there are certain systems of logic called free logics which don't have this requirement. Let's check them out. Now I mentioned in the first video that one major constraint on the way that constants work in classical first order logic is that they must name things. So that for instance, New York or Mars are perfectly acceptable as names, but names like Sherlock for the fictional detective or Santa are not. What this means though is that Sherlock and Santa kind of refer to the same thing, namely the empty set. That is, the set which contains nothing. And it seems a bit odd to talk about it that way because obviously Sherlock and Santa are not the same thing. And this is the guiding intuition of what are sometimes called free logics. And they're so called because they do away with this requirement altogether. So free logics will allow constants like Sherlock because they don't require that the objects named by the constants exist. In such a logic, one of the most important predicates will be the predicate exists. So that we can distinguish between, say, New York exists, which which is true, and Sherlock exists, which is false. So these languages will have a special predicate, sometimes given as a kind of fancy E, which will have an arity of one. Including an existence predicate might seem like not a very big deal, but actually some major debates turn on whether or not existence can be read as a predicate in this way. And it's generally thought that at least one significant historical argument for the existence of God turns on whether or not existence can be treated as a predicate at all. That's the first point about these logics. The second is that we'll have to make a distinction between certain kinds of predicates and the truth conditions for them. For instance, lives in is true of Sherlock and London. Sherlock lives in London is a true statement. But there won't be the same symmetry we saw in our other predicates, which was underwritten by the assumed existence of the things that they deal with. So, is lived in by will appear to be false of London and Sherlock, whereas Sherlock lives in London will be true. So, doing away with our assumption that our constants only name things which exist has introduced this difficulty with predicates like, for instance, lives in and is lived in by, or sees and is seen by, where just because it's true of a fictional character that they see some real life person doesn't mean it's a truth about that person that they're seen by that fictional character. Now again, we're not going to be studying free logic or any system like this for this course, but this is just to tell you that one, such systems exist. Two, if you find the existence requirement for constants a little odd, you're not alone in the great big world of logic. And three, that attempts to address this come with problems of their own.